everyone, let's get going on section 3.4 where we're going to review composition of functions. So we're going to combine functions initially using algebraic operations. And when I say algebraic operations, again, we're talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, our four basic operations. Um, then we're going to create a new function through composition of functions. We're going to find the domain and range for these composite functions. And then we're going to work ourselves backwards and decompose a composite function into its component functions. So before we get into the composition aspect of 3.4, which is the heart of section 3.4, we're just going to review up combining functions using algebraic operations. So we're going to define f of x to be this line, 3x minus 4, and g of x to be this parabola, 2x squared minus 1. And we're going to find each of the following. So we're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Right. So all four of our algebraic operations. And before we get going, I do want you to see that for two of these, you see numbers in the parentheses in terms of the function value and see in parts B and D you see the letter, right? So what that means is the answers in parts A and C will be numbers and the answers in parts B and D will be functions, will have letters in them, will have X's in them. So if you start with numbers, you'll end with numbers. If you start with letters, you'll end with letters. All right, so this looks fancy, all of these do, and, and what happens is this looks like multiplication. Many students say, oh, this is f plus g times zero. It's not. This is still function notation. So this is, if I was going to say it out loud, f plus g at zero. So it's not f plus g times zero. There's no multiplication here. This is still function notation. But it's not terrible to, to handle this. All this is saying is plug zero into each of these functions and add those numbers up. So if I want to do the sum of functions, it will literally be f, oops, not of x, excuse me, f of zero plus g of zero. All right, and then f of zero, well, let's figure out what that function is. Three times zero is zero. Zero minus four is negative four. Now, just so I'm not skipping steps, I'll write that out. And I'm, a, I'm about to run out of room, so I'm going to scooch this up just a bit so that we have plenty of room here. Okay. So f of 0 would have been 3 times 0 minus 4. g of 0 would have been 2 times 0 squared minus 1. So we're looking at negative 4 minus 1, which is ultimately negative 5. So again, I started with a number. I ended with a number. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to subtract the functions. We're going to find a difference of functions. This one has the letter in it, so this is ultimately going to be f of x minus g of x. Okay, now f of x was the line 3x minus 4. Be careful here. You have to remember to, in, to subtract the entire g function. So I, I want you to just take a look. I'm going to put a very intentional error in here. All right, so I get this all the time where students say, oh, I'm just going to subtract g, and they wind up writing negative 2x squared minus 1. And maybe you're seeing the error, maybe you're not. But you want to subtract the entire g function. And since this is a binomial, it's protected by parentheses, and I need to distribute that negative not just to the 2x squared, but to the negative 1 as well. So this is ultimately 3x minus 4 minus 2x squared plus 1. And then as I look through this, all right, I see my quadratic term. Nothing that can add to it, no like terms there. I see a linear term. And then I see two constants, and those are like terms, and negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So there's my difference function. Now let's find the product function, right? So we've got the sum, the difference. Let's find the product. And again, I want to take note that I'm starting with a number. I'm going to end with a number, similarly to A. I started with a number, ended with a number. Whereas in B, I started with a letter, ended with some letters. All right, so this will become f of negative 2 times g of negative 2. And let's figure out what each of those are. So f of negative 2, I'm going to put this in brackets. This would be 3 times negative 2 minus 4. I'm going to multiply that to g of negative 2, which is 2 times negative 2 squared minus 1. I'm going to start right in small just so I have enough room for part D. Um, so let's PEMDAS this. This would be negative 6 
minus 4, so that's negative 10. Um, if I'm in here, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Positive 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. So this is ultimately negative 70. Again, started with a number, ended with a number. We're about to start with a letter. Again, we'll end with a letter. So this quotient function is f of x in ratio to g of x. Okay. So if I look at f of x, it's going to be 3x minus 4 in ratio to 2x squared minus 1. However, there is a little catch here. When we take a look at quotient functions, keep in mind it introduces a domain issue. So I've talked a few times now about the three domain issues that you're going to run into in here. The first one is when you have a fraction where your denominator is zero, right? You have to look at roots. If you have a radical with an even index and a negative radicand, that's bad. And then we'll also have to consider logarithms where the argument is zero. Now we are introducing a fraction here, right? You see, I have a problem. I have to be careful. I can't let that denominator be equal to zero. So where is 2x squared minus 1 equal to 0? Well, I'm going to cram it in here. I don't have a ton of space. So let me push it down here. When is 2x squared minus 1 equal to 0? Well, that's when x squared is equal to 1 half. Move the 1 over, divide by 2. If I take the square root of both sides, that would be x equaling plus or minus root 2 over 2. So what I'm trying to say here is that this quotient function, it is 3x minus 4 in ratio to 2x squared minus 1, as long as you account for the fact that your domain has been altered. Instead of all real numbers, it's negative infinity to negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2 to positive root 2 over 2, and then root 2 over 2 to infinity. Okay, Because I ultimately need to pull, throw root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2 out of my domain. So again, you can see I started all the way left to all the way right, but I ruled out negative root 2 over 2 and positive root 2 over 2 because those were the two numbers that zeroed out my denominator. And if, if you're not sure, right, you could always check it. I just want to remind us about our store function. So let's, let me turn this on. Let's say I took the square root of 2, divided it by 2, right? It's that 0.707 number. Let me store it into x. And I want you to see the expression 2x squared minus 1 it's equal to zero. That's a problem. If I had taken the negative square root of 2, divided it by 2, stored it into x, and then look at 2x squared minus 1, it's also zero. And I can't divide by zero. And that's exactly why I threw those two numbers out of my domain. Okay, let me scooch this up so we can summarize everything we just went through in this example. Another gigantic box. All right, so if you have two functions f and g, then for all the values of x for which f of x and g of x are defined, meaning all of their domain, the functions f plus g, f minus g, f g, and f in ratio to g are defined as follows, right? So f plus g of x, if you want the sum function, then you add the, the functions. You add the two functions. If you want the difference function, subtract the two functions. Product function, multiply the two functions. Quotient function, divide the two functions. All right, and here we go. The domains of f plus g, f minus g, and fg include all real numbers in the intersection of the, the respective domains. All right, but the domain of f in ratio to g includes those real numbers in the intersection of the domains, and on top of it, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. So what that means is you need to evaluate your individual functions for their domains. If you're adding, subtracting, or multiplying those functions. You'll look for where the domains of f and g overlap. You'll do the same thing for the, the quotient of f and g, but you'll also need to make sure that the denominator never zeroes out. And, and we'll practice this when we get into composition of functions. All right, so with that, when we uh, this was taking a look at these operations on functions in terms of what I would call analytical functions. And I'm gonna scooch this back up just so I can talk again about analytical functions. So when you hear me mention analytical functions, all right, it means functions that we can plug into. So this was the analytical approach.
to using algebraic operations on functions, right? I had some functions I could actually plug into. When we get to the next example, we're going to look at a numerical approach and a graphical approach. Because with a, a lot of these problems, I want to attack them three ways. With functions you can plug into, the analytical way, with graphs, the graphical approach, and just with tables of values, the numerical approach. So that we're, we're really looking at these concepts through three different lenses. All right, so that'll wrap up example one, and I will see you in a bit. Bye.